<laughs> so this is our little tour through uh, Boston startups this, this morning. So Excellent. And the uh, MIT Emerging Tech Conference. So, um, so who are you? I'm Tom Wilde, the uh, CEO of Everything here in Cambridge. And what is Everything? <laughs> so Everything the name is, doesn't tell me what it is. That's right. Uh, Everything is uh, a company that spun out of uh, one of the uh, icons of Cambridge, BBN Technologies. And BBN's been in the uh, government R&D space for about four decades. Okay. And what does it do? Uh, so BBN developed uh, some no, core... No, what does Everything do? Right. Uh, yep. <laughs> Everything has taken the core uh, speech-to-text technology that uh, BBN developed. Uh, and has built what we call a media merchandising platform, okay. which is sort of a, a fancy way of, of describing uh, a problem in the market, which is that audio and video on the web is difficult to discover because it's not text. Um, and therefore, uh, big media companies specifically uh, who are looking to drive more consumption of their audio and video assets uh, struggle to do that. Yeah. Uh, and because of that, they are, are looking to uh, uh, drive more ad revenue associated with that consumption as well. Yeah, we're having that same problem, right? We put a 15-minute video out there, and it's not really searchable. It's a pretty opaque thing to right. uh, Google. The only thing Google can study is the metadata that we put in, the title and the text around and the exactly. tags. So what do you do that's different? Yeah, we really looked at this as, as how do we solve this whole problem for, for a big media publisher. Uh, and so to do that, you really need to have several steps in the process. The first is the ability to ingest many types of media format. Uh, so we don't want to make our customers you know, all conform to a single standard. Uh, we can handle up to 100 different formats. We ingest that content. Using the speech to text, we're able to derive uh, um, almost a transcript quality output. Every word is time stamped. Uh, we then run that through natural language processing, which basically extracts tags, people, places, okay. and things. Um, that content gets indexed, so it's now ready for uh, a sort of basic uh, text keyword search. Uh, and then the last step is it gets uh, published through our uh, hosted publishing solution. So every media asset, every video, every audio object gets its own permanent page on the web as part of our customer site so that when Google arrives to index it, it's a well-formed page, uh, SEO best practice, the text is visible to the crawler, uh, and on top of all of that, it's a great user experience. Yeah. You can't just do SEO for SEO. It's got to got to yield a great user experience. Now, how much did people do in that whole thing? Is that all computer done? That's a hundred percent automated. Wow. Um, the the only uh, sort of manual intervention is setting up the feeds and the templates uh, to begin with with the customer. Once that's done, the rest of it is completely manual, uh, uh, completely automatic. Um, there is uh, the ability to go in and edit any any of the things I described through our management console. Can I see what one of these pages looks like? Sure. Um, so if we look at uh, the Fox, uh, Fox News video archive here, this is live on their site. Yep. Um, all of this resides under the top level domain uh, uh, foxnews.com uh, forward slash video search. Yep. Uh, and what we've done is as we ingest all of this content, we organize it into a set of topics. I think Fox News has several hundred topics at this point. Some of our customers have several thousand topics. Uh, and so what we do is as we discover these topics from within their content catalog, we're able to organize them into this directory structure. Okay. So if we want to go find Henry Paulson, um, either a crawler could navigate this tree or a user might, but more likely a user will discover one of these pages out on, on Google. Yep. Um, but if I were to navigate to the Henry Paulson page, basically this is all of the content from Fox News um, that we've ingested and indexed where Henry Paulson is mentioned. He may be mentioned in the title or the tags of the video. To your point, you know, someone has, has manually created that. You can see the number two result here. He's in the title. Yep. He may not be in the title or tags, but rather will be in the text that we generate. And this first example is a good one. This is the transcript we've generated for, for this particular podcast where Henry Paulson is mentioned. The user would not have found this through a typical you know, search approach because the, uh, the search engine would not have known that Henry Paulson was mentioned here. Right. So you can see this is organized into a, a dynamic page that constantly updates itself around uh, uh, content, in this case, related to Henry Paulson. We also have related searches over here. You can search the archive. We have the hot topics of the day on Fox News. Um, and in the case where Henry Paulson is located you know, in multiple places, you'd see multiple uh, of these snippets that you could uh, mouse over. Now, now this is for big name uh, media organizations like Fox or NBC or mm -hmm. whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, I, does that reflect on the cost of it? Or uh, tell me how you guys yep. make money. And is it something that is going to go down level so that, you know, 
normal video bloggers can put this on their blog soon? Exactly. Or is it still too cost prohibitive to do that for most most video video people like me? It's not, um, not particularly cost prohibitive. I think we started with the major media companies because uh, you know those are sort of the lighthouse customers to establish ourselves in the market and, and prove out the solution. Um, in the first quarter of next year, we'll have a self-service solution where if you're a, a video blogger or a podcaster, you can sign up, have your content processed. It will it'll, uh, give back to you a set of you know, pagelets which you could integrate into your, your site using your content management system and so forth and have the option to either pay for it or have it ad supported. So we'll, we'll offer sort of both of those for, for sort of the mid to long tail of the, of the publisher market. Okay. Um, but typically, a, a big media customer will pay us as a, a monthly fee for software as a service. Um, for this uh, processing and publishing capability. Cool. Now, for somebody like this, it probably increases the advertising, um, c contextual advertising possibilities. Uh, if you click on one of those right. pages, does does that uh, having that text does that help out the Google ads that are going to be put on that page, or the other kinds of ads that are being put on that page? And tell me what effect it ha has had. Yeah, it's a great question. Let me just mute this because sure. the ad plays first. Um, one of the opportunities around audio and video is to use this contextual uh, uh, sort of metadata to better target ads, whether they're display ads on the page or text ads on the page or, or uh, you know, in the case of pre-rolls or, or overlays. Um, you can't do that if you don't have a rich set of metadata and text to work with. So over time, as advertisers begin to create more media to target um, this kind of inventory, they'll be able to more finely uh, target it using the metadata approach. Today, using display and text ads, you can certainly do that. Um, with pre-roll and uh, overlays, you'll see that happening over time as, as the amount of, of ads, uh, the, the media itself, uh, grows because the big challenge today is they have relatively few numbers of, of advertisements to run against the, the targets. Yeah. So the, the NBC or Fox could use it to sell advertising just to the sports-based uh, videos that they have or just the political based advertisements or something like that. Right, that's true today and in the future you know you could imagine them targeting targeting more and more finely by creating uh, mechanisms to pull uh, you know targeting channels out of the text itself. So those are the kind of things that are possible into the future for sure. Okay. And you said in October you were going to announce something new. Is that what you're showing me here, or is, that, is there something else that's coming out that we haven't seen yet? So what you see here is, is the current version of our player. The October release I'll show you in a second. I'll just give you a little tour of what the player looks like today. So here's the transcript that we've generated. You can see these are the automatic tags that we've pulled out of the transcript. So Henry Paulson, real estate prices. They're both named entities and concepts. So real estate prices would be conceptual. Yeah. Um, you can resort the... Uh, and today uh, is late September 2008, right? That's right. <laughs> we might watch this in 2009 sometime. But <laughs> that's right. That's right. No, hopefully not. Uh, you know, and, and you can resort the, the transcript uh, using this approach, and it marks the transcript on the, on the video timeline as well. Oh, that's nice. If you click on any of these uh, uh, jump twos, it will jump the video to that point uh, in time. So this really, for the first time, delivers a true lean-forward experience for video consumption. Yeah. To date, video on the web has still been a lot like just another screen to watch video on. It hasn't been the interactive experience that it could be uh, prior to our solution. Um, so if we were to look at the, uh, the next release we have coming out uh, in uh, October, uh, you have our new player. And our new player is really designed, and I'll just uh, go back here to uh, uh, one of the other videos to start uh, uh, giving you the tour here of what we do. So this is uh, our new player. And this really is designed to accomplish three things. First, um, really solve the interaction between metadata and the, and the viewing experience. So deliver a true lean forward video experience. Second, really add all of the viral features you'd expect in a video experience into the player itself natively. And third, allow the player to talk to multiple video backends, YouTube, an in-house CMS, Brightcove, et cetera. Okay. So it's really designed to do those three things. So if I, if I kind of show you those in order, similar to the player you just looked at on Fox News, um, you've got a series of tags that you can navigate. So I can click on any of these tags and it will jump to that moment in the video yep. where Animal Shelter is mentioned. You can see it's marked here in the timeline. Okay. Um, I can search this video. So I could search for uh, the word shelter and you can see where the transcript, the word shelter, appears. I can click on that and jump to that moment in the video. 
um, you'll be able to uh, comment on this video at a point in time, and I'll show you how that happens. So right. this is really leveraging the metadata in a way that hasn't been done before relative to the video consumption experience. You're also able to navigate this video in a new way through scene-based navigation. These are the thumbnails and the tags that we've pulled out of this video that we, that we find are, are sort of most relevant to navigating this video. So if I wanted to navigate this through a series of uh, thumbnails, I can do that. You can see there's the, there's the thumb we pulled. Uh, this is where Animal Shelter is mentioned. Um, I can certainly navigate a series of playlists. Um, yeah. These are other videos related. That's standard stuff. Where it gets really interesting is around the, um, uh, the viral and social features, I can dynamically create a clip within the clip using this drag and drop timeline. Uh, and then I could comment at this point in the time if I wanted to. I could email just this clip I've created or the full video. Hmm. I could embed just this clip or the full video. Um, and of course, I can bookmark this asset as well. This is creating a virtual clip. It's not a physical clip in that it just has a seek to uh, capability that is, is stored on our side. So anytime someone wants to access this clip, it knows what the seek to point was. Yeah. So we've really, uh, we think, solved that portion of the video consumption experience um, with this new player release. And then lastly, um, in terms of YouTube and other uh, player backends, let me just show you that. Um, this happens to be a, uh, a YouTube video, um, which is part of the, the pet category here for this particular website. Okay. And this plays a YouTube uh, video the same way it, it would play a video natively from the customer's CMS. Same thing happens. We still wrap the YouTube video with the full range of metadata that we've produced. You can still jump to the point in the video where the metadata exists. Um, and this is all sits outside of the YouTube asset because it's the, the metadata that we wrap it with. This is all using the YouTube Chromeless player, so we're, we're abiding by their terms and conditions. You'll be able to search within this uh, clip um, and comment as well at a point in time. Because again, the, the okay. metadata is virtual, right? It sits around the video asset. We just know what YouTube asset we're talking about here. Yeah. Also can do scene-based navigation, um, and you can also do all of the sharing functions that we just described um, within this clip as well, because YouTube supports the seek to, uh, seek to command that, that we rely on to, to deploy this. Are you going to uh, shove into any of the social networks like Facebook or MySpace or whatnot, or is that just part of the embed that you would get? That's right. I mean, part of the embed you get is to, uh, uh, is to show any of those capabilities and features working yeah. on itself. Um, you'll be able to either send those to um, any of the social networks through bookmarkings or uh, also actually move the clip over there through a set of uh, embeds or, or widgets that we deploy. Now, if I clip out a piece of a YouTube video and, and use this player, um, first of all, do I, who, who, who chooses which player I, if I just go to YouTube, I can't just pull a video into your player, can I? Right, so that's a good question. The, uh, that's handled through our console. So if I show you uh, the management console here in terms of how we let our customers do that, um, the way right, but so, so one of your customers has to sign up for every correct and pull in the the specific. I can as an end user go to YouTube and just say I want to use this player to view this. Video That's correct. And, and yeah, you would as a, as one of our customers okay. um, be able to register a YouTube channel in our console through our, our source management. Um, that would then ingest the YouTube videos you you pointed us to. That would get dropped yeah. into your collection. Uh, and then it would uh, manifest itself through the player that we give to you to put on your site. Okay. Yep. Cool. And um, are you going to put any advertising in that, that player then, or do I put advertising and then who, who shares the revenues and, and how does that work? So if I'm a, yep. a local TV station or fast company TV and I use your player and I put all this video into, into your player, who gets to put advertising there and who shares the revenues? One of, one of two things happens. If, if it's Fox News, then their ad tags, as you saw in the, in the little demo we gave there, their ad tags run in front of this video because we're simply embedding their ad tags in the playing experience. So okay. it just calls their ad server and runs the ads just as they've sold them. Um, with our self-service uh, solution, we will have ad serving capabilities such that we can monetize it for you and share revenue with you or you can tell us that you've done a deal with an existing ad network that you want to drop in there. So okay. we'll, we'll 
build the switch capability into the player itself. And that's what we've already done with, the, with sort of our, our tier one customers. Cool. Are you uh, aggregating any of the uh, ad networks out there so that you can offer me, hey, there's 15 ad networks I'm working with right. and I'll do an auction or anything like that? Are you thinking of anything like that for our initial as a service to you know, Fast Company TV or Fox yep. News or whatnot? Um, our initial approach to this is to work with a couple of the, uh, the sort of network aggregators out there, and we'll have some announcements about uh, some deals we've done there uh, in the near term. So there's a bunch of, there's actually a whole segment of the industry that has just built that technology, which is this ability to sort of yield optimize uh, video inventory. Um, so we'll partner with those guys and, uh, and help our publishers uh, benefit from that. Very cool. And one last question, the commenting stuff that you're putting in the new player, mm -hmm. is that going to hook into like Intense Debate, which just got bought by uh, uh, Automatic today, or Discuss, or any of the commenting aggregators? Or are you going to uh, hook into FriendFeed and allow people to post things in FriendFeed and have them show up on the videos here, because that's a popular service for people uh, sharing videos with each other. Now. Yep, absolutely. I think all of those things are, are sort of on the table in terms of how we blow out the commenting capability. With the big publishers, typically we integrate with their sort of single sign-on uh, infrastructure for their existing uh, social networking features on their site. So that's sort of the most common way we'll work with like a Fox News. Um, as we move out into the, into the uh, sort of mid to long tail of the publishers, then all of those things that you describe make a lot of sense. Um, you know, we want to leverage what's already out there, not sort of recreate the wheel when it comes to commenting, but make all of this content part of that ecosystem. We think that's where the real opportunity is. Cool. And where do I learn more about it? And so our, and you can who's funded you, by the way? Yeah, too. you can learn more about us at uh, everyzing.com. Uh, we're funded by Axel, uh, General Catalyst, and Fairhaven, okay. uh, as well as BBN Technologies, our, our original, uh, original uh, uh, spin out. Very cool. Well, thanks for giving Good. me a thanks great a lot, look, Rob. and uh, looking forward to seeing more of of this kind of stuff because we care about video. Good, yeah, so, appreciate the you. time. Thanks.